Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to be here because uh, just last week we launched our official connector uh, for Apache Spark, uh, for NeoJ and Apache Spark. So it's a really good fit, uh, uh, timely. And I really quickly want to show you how, how this would look like and how it would work. Uh, so um, basically, me, I'm leading the developer relations team at, at Neo4j. And if you want to find more about me, you can look at these contact details. Um, Neo4j is a graph database. And why are graphs important? Because oftentimes, there's much more value in the relationships between entities than in the entities themselves. And if you can take the topology and the context into account, then you oftentimes get much more uh, value out of your data. So that's just a little bit of an uh, Baseline and actually, I have a really cool data set. So it's the FinCEN files from the ICIJ, which is the investigative consortium, an international consortium of investigative journalists. And they uh, got access to a leak uh, of the FinCEN uh, authority, which is part of the US Treasury, where banks need to report their um, suspicious uh, activities uh, to that authority. And they got an access to a certain part of that and published uh, some of the data that they got. Um, so there's basically suspicious activity reports, uh, which uh, contain information about uh, which bank filed a report, which bank uh, kind of where did the money come from, where did the money go to. And what's really interesting is that even in that tiny, tiny, tiny sample, it was already like $2 trillion of, of money that uh, kind of flew around the globe um, uh, from what they got. And as they published the data, I thought it would be a really cool data set to look at from, from, from this perspective. Uh, so in the graph model, I, I created a really very simplified version of the graph model. Uh, so you basically have just one bank, which is the center of the money, one bank, which was the receiver of the money or recipient of the money, and then a transferred relationship with amount and date uh, on, the, on the relationship. So kind of how the two banks interact with each other and what kind of volume of money did flow between the two banks. So it's really simplistic because you only have 10 minutes uh, to go into this. And what I can do now is kind of, I can make use basically of, um, Spark or Databricks and Neo4j uh, to, for each of them to do what they are uh, meant to do best. So basically do all the data processing and pre-processing in, in, in Spark, ingest it into Neo4j for advanced graph analytics, and then get the results back for my integrating it into my ML flow, for instance, uh, as such. So in this kind of lower box of data integration is where the, um, so this is the, the data science bit, uh, the, where the um, new Neo4j connector for uh, Apache Spark comes in, which is a bi-directional connector between the two. So wherever, um, Spark runs, you can connect it to Neo4j, send data to the graph, get data back. And I just want to show you uh, where this, uh, how this looks like. Uh, basically, uh, we built this new version on uh, the data source API. So it's available through Python, through Scala, or R. So you can um, pick your choice of uh, uh, language. These are examples are in Python here. And on the left side, you see kind of examples for writing data. Um, uh, reading data from Neo4j into Spark. So you basically get a data frame back uh, based on the data that you request from the, from the graph database. On the right side, you see uh, kind of how you would connect to the uh, graph database to uh, write from uh, Spark into Neo4j. Uh, for a practical example, uh, I kind of have this kind of tiny pipeline and, and a notebook where we basically get the uh, data from the ICIJ as a CSV file or as a table. Either way is possible, of course. Uh, we load it in data frame. And then we use the connector here to, um, to create the, the graph database from it, so nodes and relationships. And then we run a graph compute and we call the graph compute again from Spark uh, to get the results back into Spark into the data frame. And then I could use uh, ML computer, could train a model uh, for predict predictions or classification or other things based on, for instance, embeddings that I can compute in the graph as such. Uh, so that's on a, on a high level. And uh, now I want to kind of show you what this looks like. So I set this up as a notebook in, in Databricks, um, uh, basically having all these steps. So I initially get the CSV from, from GitHub. Uh, here's the CSV data with the, the bank's uh, source and target bank uh, and the volume of uh, money that flew between uh, these banks. And uh, so we uh, see this here. And then I can use this as an, as an input uh, data frame for what I want to do. Um, as the first step, I create uh, the nodes, uh, the entity nodes, the bank nodes, basically from that, and I just create an union uh, with source and target into one um, column, ID column, and I just create entities. So it's this colon, colon entity uh, label that identifies the type here based on the ID. So it's really a dynamic entity, so I didn't want to add more detail uh, that we don't need for the demo here. So it's uh, all the banks that we have in here, and then uh, as the next thing, the relationships. 
And I connected it to a Neo4j sandbox instance, which are uh, on the fly um, playgrounds for Neo4j that you can use. And it has connection details and you can open uh, the, the sandbox with uh, a Neo4j browser or our uh, Bloom visualization tool. And if I send the data to Neo4j, I'll show you how it is, uh, what, what this looks like. Uh, so I, I initially start with the, um, with the entities and then um, uh, do the same with uh, relationships. So I basically have a source and target ID for the for the banks and the sum up the man money that flows between the banks. And as you can see, it's quite a lot of money. So these are up to $2.7 billion that flow between two banks, uh, which is really scary in, in some way. So, and then I use that to kind of map these, um, uh, this data frame uh, to relationships, meaning I have a source entity, a target entity, and uh, create a transferred relationship where the amount property is stored on the, on the node. And uh, after I've run this, um, which just takes a few seconds, I get uh, my data in a graph. So if I look, want to look at this, I can uh, look at my uh, data here in the graph. So I see I have a few thousand banks and a few thousand uh, transfer relationships, which looks like this. Or if I want to go at a larger scale, I can uh, go into Neo4j Bloom and then do like graph-based pattern searches. I don't need, not need to know the query language and then kind of zoom in and look at are there certain structures that I want to look at or um, details of any of these uh, banks. Uh, okay. And um, that's kind of the first step. So we can of course use then the connect in the, in the other opposite direction as well. So we can also use this to read data from, uh, from, from the graph. So this is matching source entity transferred money to target entity and just get the uh, amounts. And as you can see here, there's between the Amsterdam Trade Bank NV and, and the Ross Bank in, in Russia, there's $2.7 billion that uh, went from, uh, from in the, into this direction. So this is all nice and, and well, but of course, this is not, not really a value add from what I can do in this block. Um, what I can do now is I can use uh, the graph data science tools of Neo4j to do more advanced computation. So um, these examples here are just simple page rank and clustering, but you can use the same uh, for computing graph embeddings with um, uh, random projections, graph sage, or other uh, graph embedding algorithms uh, that are also part of the Neo4j graph data science library. So here is basically we have this query which calls page rank uh, as such in, in Neo4j. I can say I want to kind of have um, take uh, relationship properties and accounts like weights and uh, do this. So it project, projects the graph into a uh, projected graph for my compute. And then I just run this query and then I get the results back uh, as a data frame, which I can of course then also visualize. So page rank is interesting because it kind of shows the transitive money flow. So if a bank transfers money from A to B to C to D, then the bank D which receives all the money basically has the highest page rank because that's kind of transitive uh, importance. And of course you can also do other things. So here I put in, um, clustering algorithm, which kind of returns uh, arrays of data. So uh, it would look similar if you compute um, uh, basically the um, embeddings uh, for nodes, just then you have like 1024 size uh, vectors um, uh, or tensors of, of data that you can then use. Um, so it stops here because I didn't have much more time um, as such. And um, so I have in the, in the slides, I also have some like the examples. What I can do next is kind of really use the graph embeddings where I then kind of, uh, kind of encode what's the meaning of each entity in my graph based on topology and attributes, and then kind of develop a, a K and N similarity networks, which then show how similar are entities based on embeddings or based on other, other attributes. And I can also, as I mentioned, train ML models. If you want to learn more about this, there's a graph data science uh, link here. And we also have an uh, O'Reilly book, which I also got here. So when you, if you want to get a, uh, free ebook uh, for this, uh, which has examples for Spark and Neo4j on graph algorithms, uh, you can find this here. And um, that's, and if you want to learn more about the connector, there's an, uh, a, a landing page for that. Uh, so developer, Neo4j com developer Spark or with the sandbox under Troy Neo4j. So, and I hope I didn't run over in terms of time. No, that was okay. great. <laughs> so, Perfect timing. Uh, I, I, Very impressive. Um, also, um, <laughs> just one last thing. I also yeah. uh, have a GitHub repository with the, the stuff I also added to the, the slides. And I also add the uh, notebook there as well. So you can run it in your own environment as well. Cool. That's it awesome. for me.